In this video, you will learn how to set up your shaft wheel three different ways for spinning. The first way to set it up is double drive. Double drive is an all-purpose tensioning system used to spin a wide variety of yarns. You will need a drive band that is double the length around the wheel and the flyer. This band is long enough to go around the wheel and the whirl twice. I will park it by looping it over the black cylinder at the back of the wheel while I install the bobbin. When you look at a shaft bobbin, one end has a small whirl and the other end has a large whirl. For double drive, we want to use the small end. So place the bobbin on the flyer shaft with the large end on the inside and the small end next to the whirl. Place a whirl on the shaft, then put the flyer and bobbin on the wheel. Tighten the tension knob. Here, the tension on the drive band is loose enough that I can slip the drive band over the whirl and onto the whirl on the bobbin, and over the whirl and into the groove at the top of the whirl. Feed the bobbin leader through the orifice and treadle slowly. As you treadle, tighten the knob at the top of the wheel so that the flyer shaft moves upward, which will tighten the tension on the drive band. When both the flyer and the bobbin are turning, you have enough tension to start spinning. If the yarn has too much twist in it, tighten the tension on the drive band. If the yarn does not have enough twist in it, loosen the tension on the drive band. If you've loosened the drive band so much that the flyer and bobbin are no longer spinning, then you need to use a larger whirl. A larger whirl is for spinning fatter yarns with less twist. If you want to spin fine yarns, you need a smaller whirl, which will add more twist to the yarn with each treadle. The next way to set up the wheel is Scotch Tension. Scotch Tension is often recommended for spinning very fine yarns. You will need a drive band that goes once around the wheel and the flyer. You will also need to add a tension device. Here the tension is provided by a short rubber band and a length of smooth linen yarn. Tie the linen to the end of the rubber band and loop the rubber band through the square bar on the side of the wheel. Thread the other end of the yarn through the small hole in the black shaft on the right side of the mother of all. If your wheel has two small holes, use the one that is closest to the front of the wheel and in line with the end of the bobbin. Twist the knob slightly to secure the thread. For scotch tension, if you are spinning a thick yarn, put the large end of the bobbin toward the whirl and the small end of the bobbin to the inside of the flyer. If you are spinning a fine yarn, you can put the small end of the bobbin towards the whirl. Place the whirl on the shaft, then mount the flyer and bobbin on the mother of all. and tighten the screw. Slip the brake band over the top of the whirl and onto the groove in the bobbin. Slip the drive band over the top of the whirl and place it in the large groove on the whirl. Thread the leader from the bobbin through the orifice. And start treadling. As you treadle, Tighten the tension on the drive band until both the bobbin and the flyer are spinning. If you can feel the leader pulling onto the bobbin, you may not need to adjust the scotch tension. If there's no tension on the leader, then slowly and gently tighten the scotch tension. It may not take much adjustment. If both the flyer and bobbin stop spinning, then loosen the tension. You can then begin spinning. If the yarn does not have enough twist, 
loosen the scotch tension so that the yarn does not pull on the wheel as quickly. If that doesn't help, tighten the drive band tension slightly, then adjust the scotch tension again. If the yarn has too much twist, tighten the scotch tension. Remember that the scotch tension is very sensitive and may only need a slight adjustment. The third way to set up a shacked wheel is as a bobbin lead wheel. Bobbin lead wheels are usually designed to spin thick yarns. Setting up bobbin lead is similar to the scotch tension but the drive band and the tension band are reversed. Here I'm using a different tensioning device just to show you two different ways to achieve the same thing. This one is a small lightweight spring with a cotton brake band. It doesn't matter whether you use the rubber band, the spring, or something else as long as it works for you. This time the brake band is threaded through the small hole that is furthest away from you. This will line up the brake band with the whirl. Tighten the brake band slightly to keep it from pulling out of the hole and then park it. The bobbin may be loaded with either end facing out, but since this technique works best with thicker yarns, it will wind on faster if you put the larger end of the bobbin toward the whirl. Place the whirl on the shaft, then place the flyer and bobbin on the wheel. Tighten the screw to hold them on. Move the drive band onto the whirl on the bobbin. Move the brake band onto the whirl, larger groove on the whirl. Pull the bobbin leader through the orifice. and while holding on to it, start treadling. Tighten the drive band until both the bobbin and flyer are spinning. Tighten the brake band until the leader starts pulling into the wheel. Now you're ready to spin. If your yarn is too thick, loosen the brake band. If your yarn is too thin, tighten the brake band. Remember, it only needs a slight turn each time. If the flyer and bobbin stop spinning, then the tension is too high and you need to loosen it a little. Many wheels come with only one means of tensioning the bobbins. The shaft allows you three, so it's like you're getting three wheels in one. Happy spinning!